Okay, terrific. So, today we are talking about diagnosis and what we consider the first step <clears throat> in a training needs analysis. So thank you all for attending. As I said, my name is Robert Bellotti. Uh, I am the Managing Director of Novita Training. We are a full service training development company. If you want to learn about us, the best place is novitatraining.com. Uh, I also am the former training director of a company called Barton Brands, which you probably never heard of, but have heard of the brands, uh, Corona being one of them. They were an alcohol, or are an alcohol beverage company. Um, so as I said, we are a full service training development company. Um, we work with and have been fortunate enough to work with a lot of great clients. Um, and what we do is help companies build training to fix their performance issues. But what we're talking about today, what we're talking about today, getting a, I don't know if you all are hearing that. Let me, uh, let me mute all of you until it's time for participation because I was getting a echo, so I apologize for that. So what we're going to talk about today is how you go about identifying some of those performance issues. In other words, determining where to focus your training efforts. Uh, if you're like most training departments, you have probably more needs than your budget allows. So where do you focus those needs? And predominantly there are two ways to do that. The first is a formal needs analysis, and that we would consider a proactive approach. Uh, and then the second way, and unfortunately this is a much more common way, is to respond to requests, uh, which we would consider a reactive approach. And yet, reactive, in our view, is probably the least effective. And why is that? Well, you don't really, if someone's just coming to you and telling you they have a need, you don't really know if it's a true problem. Uh, you also, it might not be connected to anything. It might not be connected to the business's goals. And an example I'd like to use is, um, and maybe this is true in your organization, Whenever managers are asked what training their employee needs, it seems like presentation skills comes up quite a bit. Um, and, and yet, when you dig deep, you learn that the organization has had presentation skills training. So you wonder why this topic keeps coming up. And really the reason is it's because it's one of the easiest skills to observe and critique. In other words, a manager is able to see his or her employee up there presenting and says, okay, they need work. Whereas some of the other skills that could require training are, are much more difficult to identify. So that's why the reactive approach maybe isn't the best approach. And really what we talk about when connecting the efforts to your business's goals uh, it's really important for you to direct your, what I'm assuming is a limited budget, towards initiatives that tie closely to the goals of the organization. I mean, that's what leaders and executives of companies are always telling training and human resources people. It has to tie to uh, the business's goals. So in its simplest form, um, your business has documented goals, hopefully, and we'll talk about that in a second. So your employees need certain competencies and performance to achieve those goals. And if they don't have those competencies and performance, you need to address the gaps. So in a very simplistic way, that's how training can be tied to your business's goals. Um, 
But is there a different way? Is there a different way to look at this between reactive and proactive? And that's really what we're going to be talking about today. So in other words, you want to tie your training to your business's goals, but what happens if your business's goals are very vague or they're non-existent or they're always changing? Um, in other words, I think a lot of times uh, we, as training people, we are tasked with tying what we do to goals, yet some of the goals would be like very vague, cut costs, or better develop our people, better develop our managers. Uh, these are very vague, and to try to attach training to them, you, you might end up going down a path that wastes time and money and really doesn't produce. Um, because a lot of times what you're left with, as I said, is corporate goals that are uh, something, you know, one of our clients' corporate goals is to develop people, invest in people. Well, that could mean a thousand things. Um, or let's say it was, the, one of the goals was to become more productive or to cut costs. Well, that can mean anything. Um, or a major organizational change or a system implementation. There could be so many things involved with this, how do you prioritize? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And what I'd like to do is ask you to think about it a little bit differently. And I'm going to ask you a different question, and it might seem strange at first. But how do you determine what medicine to take? Let's let that sink for a second how to decide if and when to take medicine. Well, you would hope that there's a symptom present, right? You're not just going to start taking drugs. Well, hopefully not. Um, so what's a symptom? It, it's a sign. It, it's something that's telling you that something's wrong or maybe something's right. Um, and so you need to then get it tested. Right? You have a symptom, so what do you do? You go to the doctor, and the doctor performs tests. And based on those tests, a, a, a cause of the symptom or a diagnosis is declared. A and then there is a solution, hopefully a solution or a cure, if you will, for that diagnosis. So this is, this is kind of the basis for what we're going to be talking about today. <clears throat> Excuse me. And another way of think about it is, how do you decide where to invest? Well, in financial terms, there's leading indicators, if you've heard that term before. Those are the symptoms. Or, or think about it like you have to be like a detective. We're going to use that term um, today. So again, in its simplest form, the point of your training is to improve your employees' performance, therefore increasing company profits. So in order to do this, you have to look for symptoms. And then you have to test those symptoms, come up with a diagnosis, and then a solution. So let, let's look at an example of how this might look in the training world. We, uh, we have a client, and we noticed that their managers would be packing boxes, or they would get involved in very minute details. Uh, event planning. They, you know, when we were designing training for them, we would always say to ourselves, why are the managers concerning themselves with the room that we're choosing to hold the training in? So the symptoms, the symptom that could be um, observed from this is that managers are too myopic. And maybe you notice this in your organization. Managers are too focused on small details. So if you remember, uh, on the previous screen, we had our symptom, our test, our diagnosis, and our solution. And we're going to talk about the test in a minute, because those are more generic, and they, and they pertain to many different symptoms. So on the screen, you have our symptom at the top. So what could be the diagnosis after you test for this symptom? What could be causing your managers to be new myopic? Well. Maybe your managers don't know how or won't let go of these details. 
maybe they don't know how to formulate a strategy. In other words, you're saying to yourself, why are our managers getting involved in these very tactical, uh, tactical activities? They should be focusing on strategy. Well, maybe they don't know how. Maybe they're sticking to what's comfortable and controllable. And we find this very often with new managers that are promoted from being a contributor, and then they're promoted to managing others. And they can't seem to figure out how to do that. So they stick to what they used to do in their old role. They stick to what's comfortable and controllable. So there's our diagnosis. This is what could be causing our symptom. So what could be a solution? Well, there could be many. Maybe they need delegation training. Maybe they need time management, prioritization training. Maybe they need strategic thinking training. Maybe they need a coach or mentor to help them start to delegate and help them to think strategically. Maybe, there, maybe you need to establish a new manager's network. Or rethink your succession process. Maybe new managers are um, not being uh, identified correctly. So this is an example of how this process could work, of identifying a symptom, testing for it, which we'll do in a second, or talk about in a second, forming a diagnosis, and then coming up with a solution based on that diagnosis. So let's kind of take a step back and look at these four, um, four options, or four steps, if you will. What are some types of symptoms that can be out there? Well, data is certainly a wonderful way to get symptoms. Um, data from your HRIS, your IT, your CRM, your ERP, et cetera. And sometimes you have to go outside your comfort zone of your HRIS and start to talk to other people uh, in, your de in the departments that might manage these, particularly IT, maybe your salespeople getting involved in the CRM, who's ever running your, your, your ERP system. And, and you need to become a detective, like our little guy here with his magnifying glass. And to relate it back to the doctor or the medicine example I said before, data could be unexpected weight loss, right? I mean, that's never a good sign uh, if that happens to you. That's data, the numbers. So what do you need to do to address that symptom, okay? Uh, another symptom is something you observe. Uh, perhaps you're noticing, remember we noticed uh, managers were getting too myopic, too focused on uh, details. So you could notice things. You could shadow people. Uh, you could spend time in departments. And it's something that is a, a wonderful way uh, to actually go and shadow different people in different departments. Uh, something you hear uh, over here or something someone tells you. Now, this is a little different than what we mean by a request for training. Something someone tells you could be a symptom. In other words, uh, you know, uh, I was at a presentation or I was at a meeting uh, yesterday and uh, no one knew what was going on. That's something that someone tells you. Uh, it's not that they're coming to you and saying, we need training on conducting better meetings, because that, that means they're jumping to the conclusion that 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 is in fact what's wrong or what the solution is. So uh, you can go by what you hear, right? Rumors, if you will, hearsay. But it's obviously you want to back it up. And then sometimes it's just something you simply feel. And the, and the reason why I think that's OK to have that in there is because we're not suggesting you go off and develop training based on these symptoms. You have to go and validate them. And that's what the next couple of steps are. But the idea is to get the ball rolling, solving real performance problems. Because if you can look at data, things you're observing, things other people are observing, these are symptoms that can be directly tied to performance problems. So rather than paralysis by analysis, 
you start to focus your needs analysis around these symptoms. So once you have these symptoms, how to diagnose? Well, you have to remember that not all performance problems can be and should be solved by training or learning. So really, and you might be familiar with Robert Mager, this is where uh, this comes from. Uh, the problem could be, it certainly could be training, it could be educational, but it also could be motivational. Uh, maybe, maybe they have the knowledge, but they're not motivated to do, do the job. Uh, maybe they don't have the proper tools, which is environmental. And maybe the people are in the wrong position, or they're reporting to the wrong people, or they're working with the wrong department. So organizational. So the idea is to look for the issue behind the issue. And, it, and it's OK to play pop psychologist, if, if you know what I mean by that. In other words, as long as you're going to back it up with testing, it's OK to, to sort of surmise what the problem could be and try to dig deep, look for the issue behind the issue. Because, again, no one's saying you're running off and developing training based on these gut feelings or these symptoms, but you go and validate it with tests. So what are some of the type of tests? Here's where your needs analysis comes into play. So once you know the symptoms, um, you then can diagnose and can come up with, then can focus your needs analysis, your testing. And as you know, there are, there are a few ways to test, or I should say two ways with several uh, uh, manners under them, quantitative and qualitative. So quantitatively, this is where you start to assess employees against standards, start to do your self-assessments, uh, your data, uh, start to uh, create uh, surveys um, where you start to assess your materials, anything that you would normally do in a needs analysis. And then obviously qualitative, you interview people, um, do focus groups, et cetera. So once you have your symptom, you, you can then test it and then come up with your diagnosis. And then we need our solution. So now, now we need, OK, what are we going to do about all this? So what could the solutions be? Well, obviously, it could be training. And that could mean a whole host of things, online training, classroom training, whatever it might be, mobile learning, social learning. I mean, it could be a bunch of different things. Maybe it's just simply a matter of performance support. Maybe they de need different tools. Maybe it's social learning. As I said, knowledge sharing. Maybe it's coaching. Maybe they need to be better motivated or change the environment or change the organization. As I said before, change the su succession planning. Or maybe change the development planning. Maybe they are not going down the path to develop the skills that they need to. And that can include a bunch of different things from this list. So there's our, there's our process, if you will. I mean, I'm going to take it all, I'm going to take you all off mute. Hopefully this works. Because first of all, I'd like to ask if there's any questions. We don't have a very big group, so please feel free to, to speak up. Uh, if we start to get that echo, maybe people could just mute their phones. Any questions about what we've talked about so far? I have a question. OK. Um, on this slide here, you have training at the top and development planning at the bottom. How would you differentiate those two? I'm sorry, say those again. Which two? The training versus the development planning on this slide? Right. Development planning really encompasses, can encompass a lot of these different things. So someone's development can include training, can include coaching, can include uh, succession to different roles, uh, or, or simply changing the path they're on uh, currently or in the future. So that's what I mean by that. That's sort of a... a a all-encompassing one, the development planning. 
Any other questions on what we've talked so far about or about this approach? Okay, so here's what I'd like to do. I've compiled a list of some common symptoms. And here are common symptoms that organizations feel or experience. So what I'd like to do is ask some of you, do you notice any of these symptoms in your organization? And we'll take a look at how to diagnose the problem. So does anyone have one of these symptoms that they feel is within their organization? All right. Well, let's let's look at a few. I'll start picking some. I'm just trying to and you could also use the uh, chat tool or the raise your hand tool uh, on your list if you'd like. So let's say let's look at this one. Let's look at our IT help desk needs help. So here's the symptom. Your IT help desk response time is poor, right? Employees are always complaining that IT never gets back to them in a timely manner, OK? And it might be that this is going on even after you've added headcount. So for example, we had a client that had a very big system implementation. They added headcount. And then six months later, they still wanted more people. And people were still complaining. So what's the problem? OK? Um, let's look at what could be some of these diagnoses. Well, it's very easy to blame IT for these problems, right? But a lot of times, IT is overworked. They uh, are constantly rolling out new systems, new applications, new upgrades. Um, and uh, the headcount never really keeps up with that. But maybe a problem is that employees can't solve the issues or don't have the system knowledge. So maybe it's not that IT uh, is, it's not IT that's the problem, but the knowledge and the skills of the employee. OK? Because what we find is so many of these expensive technology systems are implemented, and they basically go virtually unused. Or you implement something, and maybe 10% of it is being maximized. Um, and, and really, you look at your IT department and your help desk, because this is a huge symptom that your employees need better systems training. So that could be one of the solutions. But let's look at some of, some of the other solutions. Uh, that could be the problem. Well, absolutely. Maybe, maybe you need, maybe the IT help desk needs some training, for sure. And maybe they need to improve some of their processes. But maybe you need systems training within the employee population. And it's very easy to target the exact needs. All you have to do, and if you have a pretty good IT department, they should be able to give you who's calling them, from where, on what system, and what's the problem. And if they can't, you should pr pressure them, your IT people, to say, I need these numbers. Because all you're going to do is help them in the end. You're going to say to your IT people, I'm going to alleviate some of your headaches if you help me by giving me this data. And based on the data, you start to roll out systems training uh, to the exact people that need it. Maybe they need performance support tools. I'm talking about your employee population. Maybe they need some online tutorials on some of the systems that they could on-demand call up. Or maybe they need training on the process itself. Maybe they need training that tells them when they should be calling IT and who to contact, but also when to be going to their 
uh, where, where they could be going for self-service as well. So it could be all these types of things based on this one symptom. Okay? Let's go back and do another one. Okay, here's our symptoms. And I'm going to keep everyone unmuted because I think some of the feedback is a problem. But you could also use your, um, you could raise your hand uh, or chat with me uh, if you want to see a specific symptom because we're not going to be able to get through, through all of them. We'll probably do three or four of them. And then um, if, you, if anyone has any specific one that they'd like to see. So let's see, which one should we look at? Hmm, how about only some people, the same people, seem to be succeeding? Let's take a look at that. Does this happen in your organization where it seems like it's the same people getting kudos, the same people um, producing, and basically what's happening is one group seems to be high above the rest? Now, this is a good example of a symptom that doesn't necessarily have to be bad news. I mean, this could be good news, right? And there was a really great article um, in the uh, Wall Street Journal recently about TripAdvisor, if you're all familiar with um, TripAdvisor, which is a site where you can go and get reviews about hotels and resorts and, and restaurants and things. And it wasn't meant to be about training, but, but someone from a hotel had a very interesting quote about TripAdvisor. And he said, it was a general manager of a hotel, he said, I look at TripAdvisor to see if certain employees or groups are called out in a positive way. So he said that the bellhops at his hotel always get great reviews on TripAdvisor. And what he does is he goes to the bellhops and tries to figure out what they're doing right. Remember, I think, we, I think we focus a lot of times on what's going wrong and not focus on what's going right. And that's a symptom as well, that things are going well. Um, so he goes to find out what they're doing well, and then he tries to see if he can extrapolate that and, and go and train the front desk people, the... Um, the uh, maids, et cetera, the housekeeping, the restaurant people, whatever it might be. So the diagnosis here is that one group is being signaled out uh, for positive, but you want to look for consistency. Maybe it's year after year, they're getting recognition and awards, um, and, and, but they are, um, you know, that you're saying, why is it always them? But the numbers just keep coming back. That proving that this group is doing well. So what's the solution for this symptom? Well, what are they doing well? Fig like I said, figuring out what's going on, how does it relate to others? It doesn't have to be a direct correlation. So you might say, well, how do bellhops uh, have anything to do with uh, the customer service people on the phone? Well, bellhops are providing customer service. You just have to learn to dig into it and figure out what is the correlation, and then train on their best practices. Uh, to me, in my opinion, this is such an underutilized tool in a training director's repertoire, and that is best practices. We're so focused on what's going wrong because people only come to us when, oh, we need training on this because they're performing poorly and the numbers are down, so we've got to address it and whatever else. Instead of saying, who's doing what and who's doing it well, and let's figure out what they're doing and train everybody else on that. It's a huge opportunity. Let's go back to our slide. And again, anyone uh, who would like to do a specific one for your organization, definitely. Um, so let's look at... Uh, discrepancies in numbers between regions. Here's where we get at some of the data, okay? Just have to get to...
So there's discrepancies in numbers between sales, between customer service, between production, or maybe it's between regions, teams, products groups, whatever, whatever, uh, wh however you distinguish. Um, so what's the diagnosis? Well, maybe there's inconsistent processes. In other words, if one region is doing really well and another is doing poorly, maybe there's not a, a, a consistent process. Maybe the south is doing something different than the north, or maybe it's not documented. Maybe there's inconsistent training. Maybe the head of that region or the head of that product group is bringing in more training, is developing training on his or her own. It could be certainly inconsistent leadership. Uh, maybe the leader of the uh, one division is simply not as skilled as the leader of another division. Or maybe there's inconsistent hiring profiles. Uh, maybe between regions, jobs that are similar, are, are not being hired in the correct manner or the inconsistent manner. So what's the solution for this? Well, first, everyone has to agree on a process. Remember, we talked about best practices. And if you have one team or region or product group or division that's, that's just outscoring everyone, and remember, you have to have the data to back this up, uh, you're probably going to be leaning towards their process but you want to get everyone's input to agree on a process. You want to then document that process and then disseminate that process. Uh, in other words, train on that process. And again, uh, such an underutilized, very, very simple solution. Uh, it could be product knowledge uh, that needs product knowledge training or maybe just individual skills. Uh, so. Maybe people within a region need customer service uh, training, sales training, uh, safety, production, uh, you know, continuous improvement. Um, so data is a wonderful way to compare regions or teams or divisions and start to look for symptoms. Because if one, uh, if one uh, region or team or however is, is the data is showing that they are excelling, you, you have to start looking at that as a symptom for the other people. Let's go to one that uh, a lot of training and HR people always hear about. Managers constantly complain about the hiring process. How many, how many of you have heard this from your managers that the, the hiring process is insufficient? Um, so really, wh what, what's going on here? And a lot of times what's happening is uh, managers are blaming issues with employee performance on what they see as an ineffectual hiring process. But is that what's really going on? A and it might be, but let's look at how we diagnose this. Well, it certainly could be that the recruiting process is ineffectual. That, that could definitely be a problem. Or maybe it's not documented. Maybe there, there is no recruiting process. But maybe the managers, the recruiting process is fine. The managers just don't know how to interview and select people. Or maybe the managers don't know how to develop and coach their employees. They want that perfect fit. And if someone out there knows what that perfect fit is, well, then you can be very successful uh, and probably make a lot of money as a, a recruiting consultant because there is no such thing as the perfect fit. And a lot of times managers see the deficiencies in their employees' performance not as a reflection on their abilities to develop people, but on the hiring process. So how do we address this? What's the solution? Well, first of all, if it, if it is a problem in the recruiting, there has to be an agreed upon recruiting process. And, there, and you have to also agree on roles as well. Who's doing what in the process? Because as you know, it's a very big give and take between H human resources and the manager. And then you have to train on that process, not just the recruiting people, but managers as well. And they might need further interviewing training as well. But you also need, might need to train your managers on developing others. 
because you have to remind them that most times you're not going to get that perfect fit. So they need, your managers need to diagnose the problems within their direct reports. So it's a very similar process and approach that they might follow. Okay? Let's do one more. Let's see. What do we what do we want to look at? Hmm, 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 hmm. How about uh, do something simple? New employees won't stop asking about benefits. This is one that a lot of new employees, people that are hiring a lot, they get this symptom. And it's a very simple symptom. And I'm just getting to the page that I need on my end here. So new employees have a high number of questions about benefits. Now, how do, you, how do you come up with this symptom? Well, what you need to do is start documenting uh, either through new employee surveys or through observation um, from your benefits people. They need to start documenting questions, frequency, and um, uh, how often they're getting the same questions to really get at this symptom, if you will. But let's say you have your benefits people coming to you and saying, you know what, we're just getting too many questions about benefits. It's disrupting our work. It's counterproductive. So a diagnosis could be, well, there might be no onboarding process or an ineffective onboarding process. Or, or maybe there's a, a process and managers are not following it. In other words, maybe the process is, that managers should be explaining certain things that they're not. Or maybe information is not easy to find. And, and we find this so many, we do a lot of onboarding projects for clients. And we find this all the time that uh, new employees say, well, we need this, this, and this. And HR says, well, that exists. It's up here. It's there. It's over here. And the problem is they have it in 15 different places. It's on the internet, it's on the SharePoint, it's on their server, it's on the uh, LMS, it's all over the place. So information is not easy to find, or maybe the information doesn't exist. So maybe there needs to be uh, more information about benefits. So what are we going to do about this? Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to analyze our current onboarding process and see if it does account for benefits. Or maybe we need to define a new process. Maybe your onboarding needs uh, enhancements, improvements. Maybe we need to develop some self-service tools. Maybe uh, we can reduce the disruption of the benefits department and think about the direct relationship to cost by that. Right? Think about, think about tying it to your business's goals of cutting costs. If you could cut benefit errors, if you could cut uh, benefit headcount, I mean, you know, this, this is directly related. Um, so developing some self-service tools or maybe training managers, okay? Now, new employees, as a side note, there's a whole host of symptoms that your onboarding uh, could need some improvements. It could be uh, they're disrupting others. There's a high number of calls to the help desk. Uh, managers are complaining that there's uh, too much time being wasted onboarding. Uh, new employees are bothering the executive's assistants throughout the organization. Uh, the referrals are going down. Retention is going down in new employees. I mean, there's so many different ways to get at this. So there's a great example of getting at the symptoms of your um, new employees as well. So here are some very common ones that we've been looking at. I actually do have a document um, that goes through all of these and even some, some, uh, some additional ones. And it, um, it tells you what the symptom is, uh, how to diagnose it, and potential solutions. So if anyone would like that, uh, I'll be sending out an email after this uh, webinar. And you could just let me know that it, uh, that is something that you're interested in. Uh, but let's jump ahead a little bit uh, because we, we went through some of these. So what do you need to do back on the job? What are you going to take away from this? Well, the first thing you need to do is to start to tune in. Like I said, you need to become a detective. 
Okay, you have to be aware of the surroundings uh, that are going on around you. Um, you have to start to look for symptoms. Start to recognize symptoms that are going on. And we talked about things that could be symptoms, data, things you're observing, things you're overhearing, things people are telling you. And then you have to start deciding on how you're going to test to validate that. This is your, your needs analysis, if you will. And then you come up with your diagnosis to determine the cause and then to identify your solution. So these are things that you could be doing back on the job. Now, when it comes to the solution, and I'm just going to skip ahead one more second, you might be saying to yourself, well, we've gone through a bunch of different solutions today. Uh, which one is the right solution? And again, this is where your needs analysis comes in. This is how what we're talking about today, diagnosis, should be your first step and what drives your needs analysis. Because determining the right solution really is based on an organizational assessment, an audience assessment, technology assessment, do you have the infrastructure to handle certain things, uh, content audit, so you're going to look at your materials, do you have the SMEs, um, do you have the budget, do you have the timeline, do you have the internal skills and headcount. Um, and if you do have the internal skills or the timeline, terrific. And if you don't, then uh, you need to, and if you have the budget, you need to start thinking about partners that you're going to be working with. Because the next thing you need to do is, of course, develop these solutions. And everything we talked about today it is really doesn't mean anything unless you develop effective training based on it. And I just threw up some examples of some of the different types of training that we've developed for clients just to show you some of the different types of solutions, whether they be online, video, coaching, guides, um, mobile learning, whatever it might be. Because this is where, this is where the solution uh, comes uh, into reality. And uh, this is where all your work of your diagnosis pays off. So um, again, if you have uh, internal, fine. Um, I'm just throwing this up there to talk about the different skills that are necessary for this process. Um, and uh, we do offer these services if people don't have the internal uh, resources to go about it. So let me, um, I think that's, yeah. So that is what I wanted to talk about. I am going to quickly unmute uh, everyone again in case people have any questions. I know there could be a feedback, so I apologize for that. So uh, you are all unmuted now. Uh, it's fine if you don't have any questions. Um, any questions on anything uh, we talked about today? Just do 14 for that one job. Super position. Okay. So, terrific. Well, I hope you all uh, got a lot out of the webinar today. This is my information. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to answer. This is kind of fun, actually. I actually enjoy doing this detective work, if you will. So if you have a symptom in your organization and you don't know how to address it, shoot me an email. Give me a call. It's kind of fun. Uh, you can check out our website uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about me and Novita Training. And I hope that you have gotten uh, a lot out of what we talked about today. So thank you very much, and I hope you have a good rest of the week.